Surrogate families can last a lifetime. Some members outgrow gangs, others never do. In our Bay Area Focus tonight, we find out what happens when gang members grow up. In many cases, they become parents of children, many of whom are doomed to repeat the cycle of violence, crime, and drugs. Richard Brown has the story. 31-year-old Mary Martinez is a single mother living in Antioch. She has seven children, ranging in age from 3 to 17. It's a challenge keeping the family running smoothly. Being a full-time parent is something new to Mary Martinez. She is a former gang member who lived a life of crime and violence. She was only 13 when she ran away from home and joined her first gang. Well, it was for protection. I was new in town. My sisters had gotten jumped by gangs, so I knew that they had backup and I needed backup, and my friends were involved in gangs. So it was like I just joined in. I blended in you know, without any problem. Martinez has been married three times, divorced twice, and widowed. There are other parts of her painful past she'd rather forget. I stabbed a guy. And um, I did a few robberies. My first job was a big department store for coats, jewelry, that kind of thing. And that was with my ex-husband. We both hit up a store in Watsonville, right there on Main Street. And we almost got away with it. If you boys don't behave, you're not going to get no soda. Two years ago, Martinez woke up in jail, hooked on drugs and alcohol. Her children have been taken away and put in foster homes. I found myself locked up with a lot of girls that have been through worse or the same thing that I had been through. A lot younger of women, older, uh... younger and older, 18-year-olds, you know, 30-year-olds, um, women old enough to be grandmas. I looked at them and I said, I don't want to be like that the rest of my life. I want to see my children brought up right. I want to have a future with my family. Martinez says she cleaned up her act and was reunited with her children. But going home wasn't easy. Her children didn't know what to make of their new mother. At first it was hard because the complete turnaround. It was hard for them to accept it. And uh, they weren't sure, is this going to last? Is mom going to go back to being the same? There's still scars, you know, emotional scars. You know, there's, there's a lot of damage that has been done. Martinez's family paid a high price for her wasted years. One son was just released from juvenile hall nine months ago. Her oldest son is in juvenile hall today because of gang-related activities. He's angry at the fact that he never had his father, that his father was always in prison, and that, you know, I raised him. I could have done better, but um, at the time, I had my first son. I was only 15. So it was like, you know, I was just a baby myself growing up. I didn't know what being a mother was all about. I just want to welcome everyone and uh, I'd like to introduce Sister Tina. Martinez credits the change in her life to God, and as a result, she started Mothers vs. Gangs, a support group that meets once a month in a Pittsburgh church. She hopes to convince other mothers not to give up on their children. But all I can tell you that the life-changing results come from Jesus Christ. Tonight, she has a special group of visitors. Some young men who are doing time at the Boys Ranch in Contra Costa County hear about her experiences. Most of them have been in trouble because of gangs. Uh, just to give you an example, in the last six months, I've attended uh, four, four, four funerals of four of, uh, that uh, four of my uh, counselors uh, actually you know, died. So it's kind of uh, sad to see the, uh, you know, the suffering that the parents you know, go through. Herrera has been a counselor at the Boys Ranch for 13 years. He has seen the effects of gang violence. Herrera says gang life has become a generational phenomenon. He agrees with Mary Martinez that it can become a family curse. Easy to get into, tough to get out of, unless you die first. I just kind of like grew into it. I like, you know, all my family was in the gang and I just grew into it, you know. Just started hanging around more and more. And then she knew I was in it. I really can't say stay away from my friends because like, the people that are in the gang, that's, like, mainly my cousins and my best friends, so I can't stay away from the people, but I can stay away from the trouble. I kind of, like, you know, think, you know, what if I was in a gang all my life and then my family starts being in a gang? How would I feel? Just like how my parents feel right now. Meanwhile, Martinez continues to pray for her oldest son. I hope that my son will realize that he needs to change and that he needs to make the right choices and he needs to seek the help that is available to him and that he will also come to recognize that there is a better life and it's not in gangs. 
Richard reports that Mothers vs. Gangs meets again next month on Thursday, August the 27th at 7 p.m. at the Vogue Theatre in Pittsburgh. And just one final note, Contra Costa authorities estimate there are 48 active street gangs in the county. Wow.